Uh oh, Fanny's in trouble again. Videos from her past coming back to haunt her. Turns out when she was running for DA back in 2020, her opponent was accused of sleeping with employees and stealing money. So what Fanny campaign on? Not having sex with employees and not stealing money. The people of Fulton County deserve the very best because they deserve a DA that won't have sex with his employees, because they deserve a DA that won't put money in their own pocket when it should go to benefit children. I certainly will not be choosing people to date that work under me. <laughs> Let me just say that. I think that what citizens are really, really concerned about is if you chose to have inappropriate contact with employees. I mean, there's nothing that I can say on it other than it is distracting. Um, it is certainly inappropriate for the number one law enforcement officer in the state. Uh, promises made, promises not kept. <laughs> well, there you go. What's going on, party people? What is going on? It's your ride share extraordinaire, the super duper Uber drivers here, guys. That's right. That's right. Thank you. Thank you. You're far too kind. You guys already know the deal. Before you hop in my ride, do me a quick favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. Poor favor. <laughs> Come on. Let's do this. Hop on in. Buckle in. And let's go. Okay, okay, party people, welcome back, and thank you for hitting that subscribe button. What are we talking about today, folks? What are we talking about today? Man, Fannie Willis, big booty Fannie Willis is back in the news again, guys. This lady here, oh my God, she's like an onion. You peel that one layer and another layer and another layer, corruption after corruption after corruption. It's just, She's like the gift that keeps on giving. And if you haven't noticed, I have finally hit the thousand subscribers mark. And I like to thank Fanny Willis, big booty Fanny, for doing this. Because ever since I've been covering her, maybe a month ago, about the Young Thug situation, I believe Young Thug is guilty. But I said that Fanny Willis is going to fumble the bag. All right? And then right after I said that, a week later, all these indictments, all this her her cheating scandal, and all this has popped up. Thank you, Fanny. But, <laughs> so, since she's back in the news, we're going to keep it rolling. All right? We're going to keep it rolling. She's back in the news because of, allegedly, she's been doing some type of money laundering. Let's take a listen to the clip. You donate 8,000 times? I cannot do even if it worked for why is that an issue? Well, it doesn't seem possible that you donated that many times. You're right, you're right. It that, doesn't, so that's actually disturbing. That, We're investigative reporters. We're just trying to figure out there's some fraud happening. You're, this is your name on the FEC website. I can't imagine that I did that. that that's like impossible. That's impossible. And we have Jamie O'Keefe going to door to door to all these senior citizens' homes and asking if they did these uh, um, donations. This one lady did 80,000 donations to Fannie Willis, allegedly. But she don't have no recollection. That's the thing that's called Smurf, Smurfing. One of the tipsters behind the investigation, Peter Berniger, has uncovered more evidence of what is called Smurfs, cutouts being used to funnel illicit funds to political candidates. Poured through Fannie Willis's donations and found evidence that these donations aren't coming from who they say they are. Like this example from Alberta, Michigan, uh, uh, from a place called the Cabbage Shed. So an example right there is why would somebody in Michigan donate to Fannie Willis here in Georgia? Okay, so that's one. But we got some more. Come on. And this example from St. Petersburg, Florida, which looks to be, as you guessed it, just a vacant lot. Now, Stephen Crowder have done this type of investigation with Maricopa County back in uh, 2020 when, um, you know, when Biden won. But uh, there was asking these questions. They were doing the uh, follow-up of all these addresses 
and a lot of these addresses were empty lots like this one. And Rubio's strongly worded letter, he says, quote, recently alarming reports emerged of fraudulent donations being reported to the FEC by Act Blue. These reports indicate that numerous individuals, including senior citizens, have purportedly donated to Act Blue thousands of times a year. Now they got Marco Rubio in on this now. He's investigating. He's writing letters about how the donations and his campaign funds are going through called smurfing. However, according to recent investigative reports, many of these individuals had no idea that their names and addresses were being used to give thousands of dollars in political donations, with most of those donations going to Act Blue. Now, the senior citizens are particularly vulnerable to the scam here. But I want to let you know, seniors, they're not taking your money from your account and donating like that. They're just using your name and your address and that's it. And once they get your name and address, somebody like George Soros, or Jorge Soros, <laughs> he will come in and use your name and address and start funneling money through that way. So they're not taking money from your account. They're just doing a different type of identity theft. It should come as no surprise that Act Blue serves as a vessel for fraud, considering the intentional lack of security ingrained within their donation processes and systems. Now, why would senior citizens start donating to Act Blue? Mm. Right. Now, we already know that senior citizens are the most, you know, um, they don't pay attention to stuff like that, especially like, you know, the Internet. And they've been talking to people from 65, 75, 85, even 90 year olds. Because, again, they're not checking for the Internet like that. So, and they know this. Again, they're just using your name and address, and then somebody else with the big money comes in and funnel your, your, the money through your name and address. Our team of uh, data experts, we have run two campaign cycles of reports that Fannie Willis's campaign herself filed to the state of Georgia. And what we found is three main issues of campaign finance violations. Now you're going to say, how does this apply to Fannie Willis, right? What's the big deal, right? Well, Act Blue is the one that the campaign or gave her money. And they're trying to figure out how Act Blue get this money, all right? A lot of empty lots, a lot of places that is, don't even exist. They get all this money funneled to Act Blue. And Act Blue is giving Fannie Willis the money. So there you go. Let's go. The first one is we found 220 donations made to her campaign and no name or address at all was provided on the campaign finance reports. Now, here we go with the meat and potatoes. All right. Now it's starting to get heavy. Now they're going to start showing the details of how Fannie Willis is involved with this. Mr. Peter here has three examples of how I think maybe like 50% of her donations, of her campaign donations have come through Act Blue, And it's all funny. Now, we looked it up under the state uh, laws of, Cal of Georgia. That is an automatic black and white violation. So there's 220 right there. That totals approximately $23,000. Okay, so the first one, no name, no address, and there's a few of them on there, so it's about 5% of her donations. When you consider this is a Fulton County, Georgia district attorney race, district attorneys typically don't have these humongous sums that you might see in a, in a national-type race. There's no reason why district attorneys get this kind of money. How do district attorneys get this kind of money? This is not a national campaign, and she's getting hundreds of thousands of dollars. Violation we found is on regarding $27,000 in donations that were in excess of the $3,000 limit. And that's the second way. Big donations, 3000 here, 3000 there. But again, district attorneys don't get that kind of money. They don't get that kind of money unless you have a big player in the game. Uh, so we're over 10% already of her, all her, of her total contributions to her ca two campaigns, uh, or are in gross violation of Georgia campaign finance law. That was just only 10% of her campaign donations. 
But where is the other 40% of the money coming from? Watch this. Smurfing is structured campaign money laundering. It's where the bad guys want to take a large sum of money, say $50 million, divvy it up into uh, various campaigns across the country, including Fannie Willis's, whereby they uh, reduce the, the transaction amount, contribution amounts to very small amounts. So imagine if you have $5 million and you want to give it to your favorite politician. If you do that, red flags don't come up, right? Now imagine if you have $5 million and you spread it around 5 million people. And then $1 here, $1 there, and 5 million donations. And then, like I said, nobody's going to come down and look at $1 donation. But if you spread it around at 5 million senior citizens, nobody's going to catch on. And that's what Smurfing's about. And that's how Fannie Willis and others, I'm telling you, other people are going to get caught up in this Smurfing because Fannie Willis, her big booty ass, it got exposed and now everybody is going to get exposed. 50 cents, $3, $7, $25. But then they replicate those transactions by the tens of millions over the years. And this is how it's hard to catch these Michael donations. All right. They just do drip, drip, drip with millions of other people throughout the years. And it's hard to catch on. But again, thank you, Fanny. You're just a gift that keep on giving. So this is now the big breaking news. We are filing today uh, under sworn oath a complaint to the Georgia State Ethics Commission against Fanny Willis of $160,000 in smurfing. Wow. <laughs> so she would have got about $160,000 throughout this scam. Caught. You're caught, Fanny. This, you add these numbers up, and we're over 50%, at least, of all her money coming into her campaign. is It was unlawful, illegally obtained, and basically she cheated in, in her elections by using that money. And there you go. That's your girl, Fanny Willis, caught red-handed. <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. Nothing surprised me with this young lady anymore. Nothing. We know 100% of them so far have been senior citizens over to the age of 65 and typically into the 70s, 80s, and even 90s. So this is identity theft. This is elderly financial abuse. And this is criminal money laundering. And we're filing a complaint today against Fannie Willis to uh, hold her accountable. What? Oh, boy. They're going to hold her accountable, they say. Oh, boy. Ain't looking good. And I remember one of my friends on my comment section says that Trump will go to jail before her. Mm -mm, not so fast, my friend. Not so fast. I think she's about to go down. And, and again, remember, this is identity theft. This is elderly financial mm -hmm. abuse. Uh, this is criminal money laundering. This is bank fraud. Uh, because of, obviously the transactions are going through the banks. Oh my God! My, oh my, Fanny, you have your plate full. The Trump indictment, your cheating scandal with your boyfriend, uh, the Rico case with your, man, you got a lot on your plate, girl. A lot. Ski wee. So, uh, this, there's a multiple, uh, of, of, uh, and it's cheating in the election. Uh, now, I don't know what statute in Georgia that would be under, but uh, she cheated in her election by using this uh, unlawful money to run her campaigns. <laughs> well, there you go. Miss Fanny Willis, come on down. Take this L. <laughs> if you guys got any value out of my content, do me a quick favor. Hit the like. Hit that subscribe. You see that notification bell? Turn on that notification bell so you get my latest and greatest. Share this content with your best friends. And tell your mama I said hi. <laughs> all right, all right. Till next time, guys, I'll see you again. And all you cheaters, get off my lawn.